So as many of you know, we published a report called The Mastering of a Music City in 2015. Uh, it's why this conference is called The Mastering of a Music City, Music City Summit, um, when CMW approached us to ask us if we would consider curating a day about music cities um, under the banner of our report. I said absolutely. So that was three years ago. Um, but since the, uh, since the publication of that report, one of the things we've seen is that um, people who, so the, you know, the, the spread of the concept around music cities and, and the idea around, um, as Michael said, intentional actions to, to ensure a thriving music economy um, has been, you know, incredible. I mean, people all around the world are talking about it. Uh, there are cities, there are advocates, there are um, policy makers. Um, there are artists, all kinds of people involved, but often um, people are struggling with the idea of what kinds of structures do we need to put in place. So the Mastering of a Music City talked about the benefits of a vibrant music economy, it described what the key elements were, and it talked about seven strategic areas. Among them was, were two things that we are digging into deeper in this report, as well as others. So. Uh, we talked about music offices at the time and we talked about music advisory boards. But since then, there have been some cities that have chosen a different model, which is a separate um, arm's length organization or music commission. And then we've had a lot of conversations about nightmares as well. So there are some interesting um, developments in the areas of structure. So we wanted to take a look at those and really identify, you know, what are they and what, what would be some of the limitations, what would be the benefits of these structures, what, how could you make them successful, what do the practitioners in the field tell us is um, the keys to success. So um, if we go to the next slide there. So we did some in-depth interviews once again, and that's our style, um, it's what we like to do. Talked to a lot of the actual practitioners, um, 17 different cities in this case, in this report, um, for our fourth report. And um, I'm really excited to um, share it with you this morning. We have some hard copies in the room. I'm going to um, identify a couple of things, like, you know, as an example. So, um, so, our, um, so some of the keys to success of a music office, as an example. Music officer should have a certain level of recognized authority. So we talk about where should that music officer or office be placed within the city to ensure that they can, um, they break down some of the silos within City Hall. They have to have some form of direct experience in music and also the means to communicate to the greater public and in the industry. Um, so a couple of things there. Keys to success for an arm's length organization must have a clear mandate that includes independence, particularly if they're receiving funding from the city, and should have strong relationships with city government and staff. And then a music advisory board, a few of the conditions of success, a clear mandate again, and terms of reference for the board, and all involved must understand those, and that must be clearly communicated to the public. Um, and also that the board should advise directly city council or a committee of city council. So it has its, that authority. So that's just a, a sample of some of the information. We also, if we go to the next slide, we talk about some lessons learned. So there are about 10, and I won't go through them all. Um, you can see them on the screen there. Political champions, strong outside advocates. Um, you have to have the trust and cooperation of your music community, and we talk about ways to develop that trust. A catalyst can be super helpful, um, and that catalyst could be a crisis, it could be a legislative cycle or an election, or it could be some other type of opportunity. Uh, data collection, on the next slide, you'll see five more. Uh, making the case for music is a bit of a, sort of a, uh, in that same theme of data collection, but explaining the value of these structures, the value of, of a strong uh, music economy. I'm looking for existing models in your own city for inspiration. So realizing that there's no one size fits all approach. And so you have to look at the, you know, the context in which you're working. So maybe you have a separate commission in another area, another industry, like a sports commission we see in Columbus. So then a music commission might be an easier path in Columbus than say a music advisory board. Succession planning, uh, we talk about, of course, a well-developed music strategy, which is really the foundation, and then patience. So those are a few uh, things that you'll find in the report. A, a key takeaway for us really is that um, the two things are needed to go in, in, um, 
in cooperation, which is an inside advocate within City Hall, someone who's really um, pulling people together within the city, doing the cross-divisional work in City Hall, and then an outside advocate, whether it's in the advisory board form or an outside arm's length um, organization. And the nightmare model that we learn about too from Murek Milan, who will be around in and around today uh, from Amsterdam, who really kind of nailed down that model. It's the same kind of approach. It's a complementary thing to a music um, music program, but not uh, it doesn't replace a music program, but has some really interesting similarities. So that's just a taste of what you'll find. Please um, take a, a copy with you, and we also have it on our website. You can download it. Um, and I'm happy to send more copies if you need some extras in your city. Um, we're happy to send some hard copies. So thank you very much, and back to Michael.